So as we get started today this video is divided into chapters. If you wanna skip at any point just look at the sliding bar underneath the plating window and you can see the chapters to skip ahead. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. host my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today is the Scrubby Bath Poof. This is using Red Heart Scrubby which is the first time I'm pretty much using this stuff. So if you see the date on this video you can see this has taken me so long to get into this yarn. So this here is what it looks like. It's Red Heart Scrubby and you can find this and this is made for washing dishes. It is also soft enough that you can use it on your body as well. So if you think it's still too abrasive you can always mix it with your Lily Sugar and Cream, your Peaches and cream and also Bernat Handicraft or cotton. What I'm gonna be demonstrating today is how to do this but I'm gonna demonstrate it with scrubby just to prove that it can be done and I actually have a sample that is ready to be uh, balled up to make into the poof and then I'm gonna be demonstrating then with the Bernat Handicrafter yarn to, so that you can see the stitch work just in case that's an issue. So without further ado you'll need a five millimeter size H crochet hook today and let's get started on our journey. So let's get started. We're just gonna create a longer tail so that you can use that later to uh, weave that in. And you're just gonna put your five millimeter size H crochet hook into the slip knot. Now it's kinda harder to see the stitches but if you're experienced with crochet it shouldn't be too much of a problem and I'll be demonstrating that as well. So it says to chain 103. If you don't happen to get 103 and it's pretty much close to it, you can fake it or make it with this particular uh, item. So you're just going to just chain. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then you're gonna go all the way to 103 and meet me back here in just a moment. Now I have the bath poop ready to go on the other side of this uh, tutorial but for now I'm still showing you the chain work. So once you have your chain and it's gonna be much longer than this of course you are going to go to the fifth chain from the hook and just try to eye it out. So one, two, three, four, and five. And I try to get the back hump of the chain. I know it may be hard for you to see that at home um, and you're going to do a treble. So wrap twice and going into the back hump of the chain. Once you get the back hump of the chain it might be easier to see the rest of them. And so you're gonna pull through and pull through two and two and two all the way back up and that was a treble. So now you're just gonna continue to go along the chain. Do you see the next uh, stitch? It's right there. It's just right open for you. So you're just gonna wrap twice and then going into the next stitch you're gonna treble and you're gonna treble in each one of the chains all the way back to the very start of this. Now the next row it does rely on to be a certain count but you can fake it honestly. The, the way that this project is uh, balled up at the end for the bath poof it's really easy to uh, be able to fake it if you have to. So just treble all the way back across your chain and maybe back here in just a moment. So here's the sample that I'm going to be balling up just to make it into the poof and you can see it's much longer. So what I want to point out to you is that the next row the, and the last row is going to be creating loops that are on the tops. Do you see this? And when we go to work with this next part we're only gonna work in a space. We're not actually looking for stitch work. We're just counting the number of spaces that we have. And so you're gonna create these loops that will be on the top. So when you finish going across on here what you're going to do is that you're gonna go across the, the same side as where the bottom is that you started. So you're gonna come across this side where this tail's hanging out. So you, before you do that you have to chain three. So one, two, three and you're just gonna go into this space right here on this side just to hold it in and you're gonna single crochet and go right up over top of that straggler as well. Get that stuck underneath because it's your lucky day. Now now that you've got this turned upside down you're going to chain three. So one, two, three and then you're going to skip the next three spaces. So this is the first space that it's in. So you're gonna skip the next three. So just pull it apart one, two, three and go to the fourth and the fourth is where you're going to smack dab a single crochet in there. Okay so there's the loop. So one, two, three and then skip the next four or three, uh, three spaces. So one, two, three and go right into a space. Now if you happen to mess up and you don't have the right count, who cares? You're gonna ball this thing up. I just happen to have the right count and honest to God that's a miracle. <laughs> so I'm gonna chain three. So one, two, 
three and I'm gonna come all the way to the last space. So let's just uh, say for example that you did, you weren't there. You could just like go in there and just go a little early and then chain three and then come into the end. You can fake it or make it, right? That's what crafting is all about. So you'll single crochet all the way to the end and then that's where the journey is going to end. So when you fasten this off, you're just gonna trim a longer piece so that you can use a tail end. You will be using this. Well, somebody will be. <laughs> And uh, what you want to do is that you want to get the ends all woven in. So when you do that, you're just gonna throw it through a tapestry needle. Okay, and you're gonna drag it across. So just stay within the chain work itself and just get it so that it will intermix with this chain. And you wanna go back and forth the total of three times. And when you go back and forth, you always go down a slightly different path so that it really does get stuck. And so any loose ends you will do this with, including the chain work that we're about to start for the next part. Okay, so once that's woven in, you can just trim that and then you'll wanna do that with the starting strand that you had and again weave that in and therefore you have this loofah with all these loops and then we're ready for the next step. So I'm now going to demonstrate it with Bernat Handicrafter yarn. This could be Lily Sugar and Cream or Peaches and Cream and create that slip knot. So you'll be able to see the stitch work more exactly this time. So you just want to put it onto the hook and then you want to chain 104. So one, sorry chain 103. So one, two, three, four, five, go all the way to 103 and meet me back here in just a moment. Once you have your 103, you're just going to start and go across your chain. So go to the fifth one. So one, two, three, four, and five and turn it around and get the back hump of the chain. And you want to treble there. So wrapping that hook a total of two times. And pull through and then pull through two and two and two. A lot easier to see now, isn't it? So you're gonna wrap the hook twice and then go to your next chain and if you stay in the back hump it looks a lot nicer and in the scrubby you probably couldn't tell anyway but it would, it's good to have a good practice, right? So you're just going to go all the way across your chain and you're going to do your trebles and if you got the wrong number of trebles it doesn't really matter as I mentioned in the scrubby version of this. So just continue along and I'll see you at the end of the chain in just a moment. So once you come across, you'll have all your troubles done in your chain and then it's just like the scrubby version. So right now we wanna concentrate on this side, the starting side. So we have to get there first. So you're gonna chain three. So one, two, three and just turn it upside down. And you're going to single crochet in between the space of the first post and the second. And just go right into a space so you don't have to worry about stitches on this side. So just move that out, out of the way. Now you're gonna chain three. So one, two, three and you're going to skip the next three spaces. So one, two, three and go to the fourth and single crochet between the space. And you're creating that loop like we did with the scrubby. It is the same pattern. So one, two, three and then skip in the next three. One, two, three, go to the fourth and you're gonna do that all the way down. So if you got the wrong count, who cares? No big deal. And uh, you can just work it out. So one, two, three, go to the fourth. So I'm got a different count this time than I did on the scrubby but I'm not gonna worry about it. So I'm looking at the distance and so I'm just gonna go one and two and then just go into the last space. Okay, so that's pretty easy. So you can improvise any, any way you want to and then you're gonna wanna snip this off and use a tapestry needle to be able to weave in the ends. So it's like how, how I showed on the scrubby. So now we're gonna have all these loops that are open that we're gonna wanna close in the next part of this tutorial. And I am going to use the scrubby as the, the version to show you how to put it together. So going back a total of three times, back and forth, and you'll do this with any tails that you do have. And then you'll create the snipping right at the project and therefore it should be completely gone. So now we're going to move on and I'm going to show you the next part of this of the finish. So you have some choices to make. You can use 
the scrubby if you want to or you can use the cotton yarn. I strongly recommend that if you're gonna do this project make sure it is a cotton based yarn not acrylic like Super Saver and uh, a cotton is meant to get wet where other acrylics are not meant to be that wet for that long. So we want to do this and so you can use um, it's suggesting to use a different yarn just for play. So I'm just gonna start off with another tail end here. Let me just get this out of the way. And all we need to do is to chain 80. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Go all the way to 80. Meet me back here in just a moment. So once you have your 80 or however you long you'd like to make it, you can make it shorter. It really doesn't matter. And you're going to snip your yarn and you're going to pull that through. And pull tight to lock and you'll pull the other side tight to lock. So you're just gonna take the one over the other and it's like you normally would make a knot. Okay, over the other and then pull through. And normally you would do the knot in the same direction but the weaver's knot you're going to go over and you're gonna take this one and pass it through going down. This makes it virtually impossible to get out. That's why those knots in yarn balls are so tight. And so you're just gonna pull tight. So if you get it wrong the first time you're screwed. <laughs> so what you want to do at this point is that you wanna take this strand and you're gonna do this with both sides and you're just going to drag it through some of the chain work that is there just to get it stuck. Okay, so you're gonna go th over and then through a slightly different path. So it's gonna cross, make it look like a worm that's been dented. You know how you can hurt a worm and it gets really fat where it's been injured. So it's, it's gonna do that but what we're gonna do is we're gonna hide that inside the project. And so you just wanna go back and forth a total of three times. Make sure it's nice and tight. I think it's tight as it is. And I'm gonna do that with both sides and I'll be right back in just a moment. So we have the circle already made so it's a little bit fatter. You can see the other one so you can decide to do either one that you would like. And so now we're gonna take the project and with all the loops and you could have had a smaller version, it's up to you. And you were just going to start sliding through this loop through. So just slide. And so you can change the direction of these any way that you wish but I would be considering to go in and out. So you don't want to have this slide off the other side of that loop and you're just going back and forth. And your goal is is that you're bringing it together so that it bunches up. And you're just jumping in between all the loops. So you can see that if you did get the wrong count at one point you really won't matter. Because honestly if somebody <laughs> if somebody is standing in a shower counting out your stitches <laughs> the water is not hot enough. <laughs> so yeah. So we're just gonna just gather on top of this and I'll see you at the end of this section in just a moment. So I'm coming up to the very end. So it's just been bunching up on top of this and I'm in the last one. Now all I'm just going to do is that I'm going to take this strand here and what I want to do actually is go like this and just pull it through. So just pull it through so that it comes through everything. And you're gonna pull it nice and tight and then you're going to open it up. And therefore you have a new bath poof like that. So it's nice and simple. It's not too complicated and just pull it nice and tight and therefore you now have the tie to be able to hang this wherever you would like to do it and it's a simple idea but fabulous and it makes for a great gift. So this is the scrubby bath poof. Have a good one and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.